Good afternoon. Here. 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 That's cool. Um, this is CFO. Been there for a time. Down there for ten hours. How are you? <laughs> All right, um, Jeff, what's up? <laughs> no, someone already uh, did a little ventriloquism act for you, so you're Thank good. You. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Wanted him to get his paycheck. What's that? What it is? Yeah. Good afternoon, y'all. Before we get started, um, I want to just take a minute. Dan Alonzo is here with our new deputy finance director. I'd like for her to just give y'all a quick introduction. To give a quick introduction. I'll introduce Amy Morgan. She's the deputy finance director. Um, Jeff and I were kind of kidding when when we got her application. I said her application would be tight. <laughs> <laughs> she sits on the board of four different agencies. By the way, for the Open Data Rail Commission, her annual annual report is out this week. So we so she started. <laughs> you brought her here? All the above. There's no, <laughs> brought her here. There's no finance report today. <laughs> Just for a while. I can guarantee she knows how to use the spreadsheets. <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. Looking forward to working with you. We're usually a warm and fuzzy bunch, usually. <laughs> Every other month we get a little ornery. But, but Jane, this is the perfect person to train you as to how to deal with us. So. All right. Just say no. <laughs> is, that, is that fair, Jeff? Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Welcome, Andy. All right, um, I, I neglected to, uh, I think we have some um, uh, amendments to the agenda. Um, amendments as stated, in uh, uh, addition to the executive session, discussions and negotiations regarding uh, school crossing guard services, um, uh, deferring consideration of some items 39, and 66 from the evening agenda. Um, is that a motion? Is that a motion? 39 and 66. I'm sorry. We have one other to add also to executive session. Under, also under contraction would be add lead generation services to contract for that. Lead okay. generation services contract. Okay. I also would like to add uh, sewer extension agreement. Is, Which is executive session. session. So you're, you're, talking about, you're, talking about, you're talking about you're talking about you're talking about contract and contract. contract. Two, two contractual issues you want to discuss. All right. All right. Um, what's the red? Let me ask you. What's the rationale of deferring thirty nine? Um, I do not know. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. It's sixty six. It's, 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 a, it's over. It's a, it's okay. We haven't it. advertised. It's not up yet. It shouldn't have been on the agenda. It was up early. All right. I mean, probably advertised. All right. Um, motion. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Just a, a minute agenda. Yeah, adding two more items to executive session as well. The generation services and sewer extension. All right. Contracts. I'm going to produce questions for Carter Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Jeff. Our first item today for discussion is the wayfinding project. Mr. Bill Allen, President and CEO <coughs> from Experience Columbia. We got Bill. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bill. Um, I think most of you know that probably about three years ago, uh, we met with several uh, city officials and several community leaders and discussed um, the wayfinding signage throughout Columbia, um, what we had currently and what was needed, and came to a uh, decision that we needed to explore what our opportunities and possibilities were to 
start a new wayfinding signage project. We sent out an RFP and uh, received 15 uh, responses from that that were national firms. There were no uh, South Carolina firms that, that answered the RFP. Um, and got that narrowed down to three or four and through some very uh, tedious uh, vetting we, uh, and recommendations and looking at experience, we decided on a company called Yazi out of uh, the Miami area. Um, over 20 years experience, very well respected in the sign business. Um, we selected Yazi and they partnered with our local sign company, Colite International, um, which is very well known oh, yeah. internationally in sign. If no, if no one's ever vis visited Colite, that place is amazing. Yeah. So, they've done something special out there. Felt very fortunate to have a company of their caliber right you know, in their backyard that they could work with, and I think they will work together on some future projects. So we um, started the started the project after we decided um, on who was going to be the sign consultant and the <coughs> manufacturer. Is this Missy? Is this ready to? Yeah. Um. So we partnered with Yazi. It's got a little information on. Their history over 30 years of experience, and Colite will actually manufacture and install the signs. Yazi, uh, Chris uh, Rogers came up and spent spent a lot of time in Columbia. He's uh, spent four or five days in a row. He visited every site where we currently have a wayfinding signage, and I won't bore you with all of this. It's 107 pages, but an extensive study of every sign that's in Columbia, the location, and what, it's, what it has on it. Um, he discovered there was a, the last time it was done was 2003, 2004. The existing signs, um, he, he evaluated what we had. It was 117 signs originally. Um, some of those signs were missing information. He said he actually followed them through the eyes of a visitor since he was visiting Columbia for the first time. He actually went in the wrong direction on some of the signs. Um, <laughs> after months of studying the market, um, he came up with 222 signs needed, which is a significant increase. But if you think about what's happened in the last 15 years with the Bull Street, we need to direct people to Bull Street, and Vista, there's many different attractions and areas, and we also have several new districts that were not included 15 years ago. Um, you know, we've got North North uh, Columbia. We've got, um, we've got several new ones. So went through all the districts, something identified there. locations of where they need to be, and um, then we started putting together a group of <coughs> local uh, stakeholders and community um, involvement. Um, you can see the two consultants on the left. On the right, you'll see Who's, who has been coming to our meetings and our discussions, <coughs> what was needed and some direction. Um, all the districts are there, the city, um, the gentry, and the agenda, and several others um, um, participated in those meetings. Uh, we were told from the start by our consultant that we need to get South Carolina DOT involved from an early start because there's a lot of code issues, so DOT was on board from the start. Of course, USC, Benedict, and the other area colleges. So we got all of them in, involved, and we had, we've had over the last, it's been two years since 2016, we've had numerous meetings um, about what we needed and where we need to get to and how to get there. Um, this is a mock up of, of a sign that, um, that looked very similar to what we're talking about here. And I apologize for not leaving it here, but um, they're all consistent. Have the only pole and the cap on top are all consistent. They're identified at the top by what the district is going to be in the color district. So each district will have their own color. Um, I'll show you in a little bit um, all the different colors. And that's been about a four or five month process of getting the districts to agree on what color because we needed. needed to distinguish the difference. So when a visitor 
leaves one district and goes into another district, they realize they're entering the historic district or the Main Street district. So, and then each sign will have directional arrows pointing them to what's in that district that's significant. Now, um, everything on the signs is public. There's no direction to, to private businesses or private facilities. It's all public. And it's all done with the thought in mind that if a visitor came and did not know his way around Columbia, he or she, that they, and they were looking for something, these signs would help direct them. The, the consultant said many of the signs were mispositioned, that by the time he saw the sign and read it, he, he'd already come up on the intersection to turn. It was too late. He also said the park, parking uh, garages is a par part of the signs also with a big P. I'll show you that. Um, he said the parking garages were very misleading. He had a city parking garage. He said he went in and there was literally 14 spaces available to the public in the, in the whole garage. So he said as a citizen, I mean as a visitor, he got very frustrated driving around with the existing signs. So what he has proposed answers all those problems. Um, here's another mock-up of a sign with, uh, I think this is North Columbia District, their color is blue. Um, the things that it points to are relevant to what's in the district. Um, here's several more. This is a vista. And you can see some of the destinations and the directions of visitors. If anybody has any questions on that, I'll take a second. Um, you can see the small blue circle P, that shows where the public parking garage is. And that's actually the garage of the parking sign. And on the opposite side, it will have the district of the parking garage, which is the Main Street District. It's got a name on the back of the sign. This is a mock-up. Obviously, it sits on a stand. It's not permanently into the sidewalk. Showing you this is one this is one existing old one that would be the front uh, that's on Assembly Street down near the Klein property. It's an old one. Um, it's good with this just to see DOT on, on the major thoroughfares like Assembly and Gervais. They're requiring five inch lettering. <coughs> Believe it or not, going from four inch to five inch increases the size of the sign significantly. So you would only do the five inch on the, the wide and busy thoroughfares. And then this is on Gervais Street right in front of the Hampton Inn. This is the smaller lettering. Um, you can see again in the background, I know that's not consistent with the district that's here. Now this is not correct in identifying the district, so this would be Vista. But it, they just ESC and explain why it's not relevant. Put it up just for the purpose of seeing the size of the sign and the size of the, the, size of the letters. So um, we actually just put it up and somebody actually stopped in the street and said, is the pension center straight away? And we had to no, you can turn left. So it, it's kind of a funny moment. This is um, all the district signs I was telling you about. It's not real clear, but each, each district Every wayfinding sign located in that district will have this color on the, on the cap on the top to identify that. On the reverse side of this sign will be photography that's significant to that district. USC district, they provided photography. We've asked for photography <coughs> from each of the districts, the historic district. We have historic homes. Um, uh, Bull Street's got Firefly State Spirit Communications Park. So it would have a sign that's uh, re relevant to that So will district. there be a master map so people, I mean, I get the color, but, you know. A master map as far as identifying the district. Um, that's something we could do right now. We're just doing it from the signage perspective, but we can certainly do a map and designate the district on the map. We can hand out. I mean, I, I, I just I just assume that's why you did it by color, because if not, why wouldn't you have it all the same so that people knew those were the directions of the city? Well, it is. Um, I, I think a lot of the businesses and the stakeholders in, in those areas mm -hmm. want people to just know that they're on a historical property. So it is 
certainly do it by objective test, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it will handle the guided tours. I think it might be nice, you know, to have ha having the high entertainment areas and other places a central map, you know. Where people can go, look, hey, I want to go to Green because that's, you know, um, Robert Mills' historic district. I want to go walk those houses or whatever it is. We'll do that, and we're getting ready in the next few weeks to open to the visitor center. We'll have that type of information and hand out the information, and, and, it, and you can do it online. So, looking at the district, the first one says Columbia. There's a fence here. There's well, it's, it says, it's going to say Columbia. See, there's a few signs, not many, but there's a handful that lie outside of the district line. Um, it's not in the distance line in the main street. There's not many of those, but of those half a dozen throughout the 200 pages, it's pretty Columbia specific. Let me ask you um, a question. The houses, um, I guess especially the ones by historic Columbia. Um, someone in the area, they want to go to a particular house, Robert Mills. During the day, there's somebody at Robert Mills, possibly. Or um, how do we handle that? Because there, because there are two, I know, that's probably not on the map now. The uh, Booker Washington one room schoolhouse, Monteith one room schoolhouse on North Main Major Corridor. Probably nobody there during the day, but um, I think as, as we tighten up on this, we probably can work with them as well as the Keenan House to be available or have some sort of a contact number so the visitors can call and someone can meet them there. I would like to see that if we can. I think that'd be great, and that might be Right now, Historic Columbia has tours, but you, you know, you just don't walk up on them. Right. You start a tour, you have to book them in advance. Um, Robin Waits is, is going to start having somebody book those tours out of the new visitor center. Okay. Give us some new central location there, and I think it will increase the number of tours drastically. Um, so those two. Um, did you say Monty? Yeah. We've got it. It's going. It's on one of the sides. And they would be on the map. Well, if it the signs is, will take yeah, it. Okay. It, it's on one of the signs. Right. We just don't have them all. But Very um, good. When you go back, to, you. go back to uh, these type signs, like for North Columbia, it'll be on one of those. Phil, yeah. let me okay. ask you. Thank your you. cell phone number. Phil, let me ask you. Let me ask you. <laughs> How are interactive yeah, with yeah. our bus? Could buses be, be uh, a part of getting folks where they need to go? They're empty now, so it'd be great. You know, I think that would be great. I think it's um, I think it's an educational process. We need the drivers trained on the different districts and you know what's in those districts, mm -hmm. because I think it's important that the driver knows where to take them, and, and it may may not be on the route. But yeah, but the reason I ask that um, is that we've got we've got the soda tap. Cap. <laughs> We got the soda top uh, as a part of the bus route. Right. Most of the time, those buses are empty. The ones that I've seen. Uh, we've got some new routes that have, of course, been right. developed. But that soda top route, uh, the ridership, I don't think is that great. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're looking at re, uh, re uh, envisioning that. Yeah, I've talked to John. I've talked to John. Yeah, I think the concept is great. I think the it would certainly working be out good. A, it would certainly be good if you had. I want to say designated buses to get folks where they ought to go, want to be. Right. Um, whether it's North Columbia, whether it's throughout the city, um, it would certainly be an advantage for those folks who are visiting. Our be able to get on a bus and say I want to do a historical tour, and there be some inter, that be some interaction with the bus route and say Robin Way for the historical route. Uh, I think that has I think that has to be an integral part of how this can be done. That, that's certainly something we can look deeper into and try to work together and find it. Um, 
which is kind of a different issue than wayfinding signage, but it, it does tie together. But um, right now, I think it's important. Uh, we had put a kind of a time frame, time window on trying to get this project done in time for the March Madness in, in March because 20 plus thousand visitors coming. We thought it'd be a perfect time, and we are on schedule to do that. We have actually moved the schedule up for some of the signage. Um, we want to have some of the signage installed in place in the Vista area and Main Street area in time for the uh, National Mayor's Conference in September. And we're working towards that goal. They told us that it is possible to get some up, but we're, we're pushing up against the ultimate deadline pretty soon. We gotta confirm everything to move forward and we're about at that deadline, but I think we can do that. Um, Everybody make sure you have the September 27th to 29th in your calendars too. September 27th to 29th. Say everybody but you. 27 to the 29th. Also, Mayor, I know that um, an important part of this project, an important part of this project was your interest in a electronic yeah, digital what's type yeah, signage. What's, what's, what's the next we we have we even we thoroughly explored those opportunities. I think you met a gentleman with one of the major companies. Was it New York, or Kansas City, or um, talked to them. Initially, we thought it was that they would provide them free for the advertising, uh -huh. but after meeting with or after discussing discussing with them on a conference call, um, they said that in a major market like a Chicago or Denver, New York, they would put X amount of free digital, knowing that they could sell enough national advertising. Columbia Market, they think, is is on the fringe of being able to do that. They said they may be able to sign enough advertising to make them free, but they would not guarantee it, and it would put us on the hook if they don't sell the advertising for the difference, which is very significant. But I mentioned this to you today because I think during the mayor's conference with all those mayors here from across the country, if we could get that guy to do a sample and let him know there's going to be how many mayors here from across the country? Oh, 50. 50 mayors? He ought to do one free for us as a sample so that all those mayors could see it. So if, if, if you'll endorse us getting in touch with him and, and pitching that to him, or if, since you met him, if you would like to, I think that's something we could, we could try. Um, any other questions? Funding, we got most all the money, and I will tell you that we've had partners in the community that are, are chipping in money. Um, uh, uh, right now we've got um, the city money money that you approved to fund. We uh, Experience Columbia is paying 50000 of the total bill. We've got um, $10,000 from the Vista. We've got $10,000 from Main Street. We've got 5000 from Historic Columbia. We are in discussions to get another 60 plus thousand, mainly from USC. We have uh, requested 40,000 from USC. They have, of the 222 signs, they have about 50 of them that are USC related. So we're asking 40,000 <coughs> for their share and they're, they're, they're telling us everybody's on board to fund it, they just hadn't given us a number. We're also waiting to get a number from Rosewood Vine Street, Bull Street, North Columbia, um, that what would add to our, our number. Um, the signs are about, the, the Circle P is about $1,500 a sign. These signs are between $2,000 and $2,500 each. That's installed. Um, so we're, we're, we're close. If we don't get the full amount, which is about $555,000, um, we'll have to eliminate whatever signs to make up that difference, which is about $2,500 a sign. Whoever doesn't um, pay. Have to eliminate a few. Whoever doesn't pay gets eliminated? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, that's going to that's gonna be the next council meeting. They're gonna, everybody's going to be lined up here <laughs> wanting us to get grant hard. money. But I, I think we're close, and I think it's a good You got an extra 500 Jeff? Sitting around. It's coming. 
not on your assignment. That's why we got you on to ask you a question. Monique and I had a, a lady. I, I was going to mention that. She's a hard time with her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we got so, it. I was going to, to, but I was going to bring it up so everybody heard it. So, um, not kind of related. Uh, Howard and I had a lady um, um, from Blackwood who um, came to our our open house, and she is from Columbia, but has been in the military. So she traveled, and so she's now come back to Columbia to, to raise her two boys. And um, she was she was expressed her disappointment. She felt there was not a whole lot to do in Columbia, um, especially for families. So I, I, I respectfully disagree with her um, in that said that maybe Blackwood doesn't advertise what we have going on in Columbia. Um, but anyway, one of the things that she um, brought as a suggestion to us is that most recently she lived in Salt Lake City and they had this pass, winter pass for kids when they're out during the winter time and summer to go reduce the different attractions. So I shared that with um, with Bill. First of all, we do have something locally called the Clear Path, mm -hmm. the Adventure Escape Museum, and the Zoo participate. But I have talked to Bill about reaching out to other attractions and let them sign on, and and then also get with Channel Two so that we can maybe help promote it as well. Okay, I'll write you. Okay. Promote it in um, Blackwood. Twenty-seven dollars. Yeah, no, this is Howard Children. Um, How old are the children? Seven and Wash my hearing this aids. Is a, this is a, Don't give me any grief about my <laughs> hearing. Yeah, I mean, particularly so the, she, so the lake, the lake, the zoo, two museums, three museums, uh, throw the city. There's, there's Most a particularly, she, football, she kept baseball. talking about New Year's and how they had a, you know, a ball drop that early in the day. So I was waiting for that adventure. Yeah. 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 We, do, we do the same thing. Um, yeah. And okay. that, you know, it was very difficult. Expand, expand, expand the past. But yeah, so you, have, you have young children, so you have young children, so you, you were. He was on it. I was going to do a ball Sam, drop in uh, you Blackwood. Museum of Art and Historic Columbia ought to be two easy ones to get on that thing. They should be. And when we did this three years ago, four years ago, we went to a dozen. You know, we were we were hoping we were trying to get a very small discounted price on the tickets so that it'd be attractive to somebody buying the pass. At the time, those three were the only ones willing to give us a discount. With the success of it, and we sold a good many online. I think now's the time to go back and add. I think we can get a dozen yeah. to participate. So Bill will work on that and yeah. let us know, and then we can help promote it here in the city. Be, be glad to. All right. Any other questions on? Rock and roll on the on the ones for the Vista. Let's get them going. Okay. okay. All right. You like the concept? It looks great. Oh, yeah. It looks great. I, like the okay. I still want I still want the kiosk, so we have to talk about that. I know. We're missing, we, I have to have a conversation. I thought we had it, and then he wanted to tie us down to a million dollar commitment. <laughs> Why do you have it? I'm sorry. It's too much. Picture, picture on the Columbia District one that's the inside of the dome. Uh, yes. Can you stay there? Y'all set on that? No, we're not. I mean, I don't know what y'all think. I always think the most beautiful thing is the skyline. Well, let me, over seeing let me point out that if there's six of those, Gave us a library of photography to put on there. They've got 20 something signs, and we've probably got 10 different pictures of it. Where it's at. So it won't be the only one. <coughs> Bill, give us an update on the business center while you've got the floor. The visitor center? Yes, yeah. the visitor center. Um, if you've ridden by the corner of Lincoln and Gervais, you've, you've noticed a, it's there, and we're almost ready. We've we got a few technology things, we don't have a phone system yet and some of the technology wiring. We should have that completed this week. Um, we're wait, we're trying to get, um, city staff is trying to coordinate with you, with you, the council and the mayor, to do a uh, ribbon cutting the end of August, um, that last week, the week of the 27th. If you can work out your schedule, we want to do a ribbon cutting and grand opening then. But um, I, I think, and I've had a lot of people comment that it's such an enhancement of that corner where you were staring at Longhorn's uh, coolers, walk-in coolers, and loading ramp, and some other ugly HVAC. Now all that's hidden behind the building, and, and, and I think the corner is just a lot more um, 
looks a lot nicer and more inviting. I think it's going to be a welcome addition. Does it look good? Thank you. And we'll have um, extended hours. We'll have some night nighttime hours, and we'll have weekends, including Sunday afternoons. Um, that we'll have we'll have it staff. So, and we may adjust that as we go along as the need directs us to. Will some of the signs direct people to the visitor center. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. We will. <laughs> there's, there's some of them. Awesome. Thank you for thank your time you, and thank, thank you, you for your support yeah. of the project. And uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up soon and we'll have the signs installed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Number two, uh, item number two is upcoming city council retreat. Ms. Melissa Kaufman, Budget and Program Management Director. Y'all have taken square footage out of my area over here for everybody but me. I used to have plenty of room to store the rest. I don't know if the law would let that be <laughs> term on that. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, in preparation for the next um, City Council Envision Columbia retreat, we want to discuss a couple of dates for planning purposes. We emailed out yesterday um, some potential dates for the week of November 6th through the 8th, which um, is general election week, but there's no council meeting that week. Is NLC that week? Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, what you running for? I wasn't sure the, the NLC dates and we get a chance to check yeah, those start, before. Yeah, it starts on Wednesday. Okay. Saturday. All right. Yeah. November. Yeah. That would be November 7th. Yeah, November 7th is Saturday. Okay. All right. Then that leaves the November dates. No other specific dates were provided for January other than exclusion of dates for the week of the 19th or the 25th. So if we, we can either narrow down some specific dates now if we want to do that, or we can look back for some other. What, what are y'all preferring, or what are y'all with? Tyler. Yes, mm -hmm. Tyler would be on site to do those. Those were dates she was available. This far in advance, I'm very flexible. Ask the venue. What was that? Dates. You, you're, uh, what was, what was dates? you're the moving target. What was dates you talking about? All those dates for uh, and all that. Envision yeah, Columbia. Really right. <laughs> yeah, I think so far, folks for January were pretty open, but we yeah. can we can work with work with you. Third week of January is horrible. Right. Mind. That's the, also the same week that we're referring to. That's out is the week of the nineteenth through the twenty fifth, which I believe is the date. So earlier in January. You don't want to do it the first week because you're coming right off the holidays. Second week of January, you're saying? Yeah. What dates you? Okay. Okay. Let's move the week of January. This look at the week of January seventh or the fourteenth. Fine with me. We need to go ahead and book a date. Absolutely, we do. Venue? We have not discussed a venue. Hawaii is what I heard. <laughs> There's some traveling. Um, yeah, really, right? Um, what about um, the U.S. Alumni Center? The Alumni Center? They have one in Cruz? Uh, oh, they don't have one. Oh, the zoo? I was going to take that from it, but they don't have one. Okay. What about the zoo? Kenan has one. Kenan has one. Kenan has one. Kenan has one. Well, yeah. Renovating that. Where? Dominion. Okay. I saw some refunds over there, too. Yeah, I'm already. <laughs> that's probably one of the calls. Y'all look at options. But, I mean, the, the zoo's great. USC is great. I mean, I, I guess any of our historic houses is probably a good option. 
So obviously, so in town. As long as it has whatever AD, we all need our capabilities. Make sure you know technical stuff is. Miss Miss Moore usually makes sure that she's she has what she needs in order to do the proper recordings and. I say spirit, but I don't feel like hearing crap every other five minutes. So I guess I don't want to pass that along. So we will get back with you on dates for the week of the January seventh and or January fourteenth. Still, Along like with some Tuesday, Wednesday, everybody right. blocks Tuesday off already. So right. Go ahead. And What's being proposed is a day and a half start. So the first day is a half day, and then the next day would be a full day, and then some individual interviews. I like the idea of Tuesday, Wednesday. Usually. Okay. Tuesday, know. Wednesday is preferred of those two weeks. You went at the last one. I think January, it was January of 16. Emotionally charged, if I remember from the state, Jason. That'd be a little, yeah. And, right I, and, and I, I was going to say Earlwood Park, too, but let, let's, let's, we, we might need to be removed a little bit. It's great for to still be in town. But. Right, like oh, Saluda Shoals when we went over to the Dewey's old office at the water plant. It's a good view. Neat, that's pretty neat place. I love that. It's a pretty neat place, yeah. All right, we've got seventh and eighth to figure out where we're, or eighth and ninth, whatever Tuesday, Wednesday is. We'll do it. Find us a we'll get back with you as soon as possible within the next few days to sort of firm up some dates and some locations. Thank you kindly. Thank you. All right, um, before, we, before we go into executive session, do you all mind if we hold on all, all boards and commissions appointments tonight? Hold them? Yeah, hold them all. Are you okay with that? Fine with me. All right. Well, well, just, just maybe a quick motion. We'll hold on, on all those items this evening. I'm so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Special clerk, call the roll. I'm sorry. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Aye.